Uh, we've been a, a privately owned company in, um, operating in North America for almost 30 years now. Uh, we are dedicated to the treatment and um, support of patients with rare diseases. We currently have five compounds that all have or, you, or at one time had orphan drug designation. So many of our patient populations are extremely small. Uh, we have um, a product that is used for um, fungal infection, which is called Ableset. We have a product that treats a, a variety of rare uh, uh, cancer types, tumors, which is called Machelane. We have a compound called Carnitor, which treats secondary, primary and secondary carnitine deficiency, which is um, a fairly rare disorder. And then we have two ultra rare uh, disease state drugs, um, and one of them is Adagen. And Adagen is a very interesting uh, drug. It's used to treat a disorder called adenosine deaminase uh, severe combined immunodeficiency. And many of you, Mom, there's a, a young crowd here, but people of my vintage, there was a movie years ago with John Travolta. It was called The Boy, The Bubble Boy. And that child had a variant of, of SCID, the severe combined immunodeficiency. And it turns out in the, in the United States currently, there are only 35 patients that are, that are affected by this disease. And as part of our commitment to that patient population, it turned out that Adagen was going to be no longer available in the market. So it turned out our manufacturing partner decided that the process that was being used was very outdated and they were not capable of bringing it up to standards that would meet current FDA um, requirements. The other problem was that the enzyme was derived from cow intestines. So it turned out it took 3.5 metric tons of cow intestines to actually generate enough enzyme for one batch of Adagen. So as a company, we undertook you know, a very um, extensive um, program to make a recombinant version of the enzyme. And we are actually in the final days of, well, actually we're, we're anxiously waiting FDA approval of that new compound. So our commitment to, the, to rare disease patient populations is steadfast and I think in the future, um, as we work together a little more uh, extensively, you'll see that that we really are a company that cares about you know, patient populations no matter the size. Um, our final compound that is currently commercially available is Cisteran, and that, that compound actually came to us through a collaboration with the NIH as well. Um, so Dr. Bill Gall, who is very instrumental in the Manac project, came to us and said, we need a partner because we've, got, we've taken this compound to a point where we now need you know, some industry support. And as a result, the, uh, uh, Cistran has been on the market for four years now, and again, a very small patient population. And as a result of you know, our interactions with all of the patient groups, we, you know, I feel we have a very uh, strong relationship you know, with the patient population, and we do care about you know, each and every one of you. So when the NIH approach, approached us uh, regarding MANAC, we were you know, very excited. And as a result of many months, almost, well, almost a year of, of negotiation, uh, we were able to sign the collaborative research and development agreement just a, a couple of weeks ago, and you may have seen the press release. So this really is a, a very important step in this project, uh, bringing MANAC to the GE myopathy population. And just to give you a hint of some of the things that industry, uh, you know, a company like ours can bring to the table, you know, we already have taken a look at the manufacturing processes uh, required to make that compound. We are recommending some changes. Um, so there are things in the background that are occurring that will optimize and ensure that once the trial that Marion has just outlined, once that trial is complete, we will be absolutely 100% ready to bring that to the market in a form that is acceptable to the FDA. We also have a great deal of expertise in the regulatory process. So there are ways that you can work to design a clinical trial to ensure that the FDA, you know, will be in, a, in, a, in the best position possible to approve that drug. And you've seen the, the absolute incredible amount of work that, that Marianne and her team have done thus far. And we are, actually, we are very well poised now to complete the trial that she has just outlined. And let me explain that from a regulatory standpoint. The trial that we'll be undergoing <coughs> um, is a trial that, that we 
you know, ab absolutely need to be, um, Marianne indicated that it was a pivotal trial. What that means is that this is the trial that we will use for registration. So we hope that the data that is, is acquired from this trial will allow the drug to be actually approved and then commercialized. So there are, are lots of things that have to happen um, you know, before, that, before we reach that end point. The other expertise that we bring to the table is our uh, knowledge of reimbursement and knowledge of access that allows patients to actually you know, get the drug that they need. So Levient has a longstanding um, history and a commitment, and we believe that there's a, if the, there's, there shall, should not be a single patient that needs our drugs that can't get it. So as a result, we give a lot of free drug away. <laughs> but you know, these are all things that we work with the payers, we work with you know, all the organizations to make sure that, but there is not a single patient that needs one of our drugs that does not get it. Um, so, you know, based on that, the strength of our experience, you know, with these patient populations, I think it's going to be a, a wonderful collaboration. And if you have any questions, don't ask me, <laughs> talk to Marianne. So once again, thank you so much. It's a great opportunity to be here, and I look forward to a long and, and uh, you know, wonderful relationship. And thank you very much for the, for the invitation. And, you know, if you have any questions, you, you can ask me, actually. <laughs> So thanks again, and I'll turn it over to the next announcer. Thank you.